We'll look at adding and subtracting rational expressions here. But we'll go back to what you already know, if, and that's how to add and subtract fractions. So say we had something like this, 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. Well, you would know that that's 5 sevenths. If you have 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths, 5 sevenths. If you had something like this, 3 fifths minus 1 third, we've got a problem here because we don't have common denominators. So anytime we were adding and subtracting fractions, we had to get common denominators. So here we needed to times this by 3 and this by 3. So that made 9 fifteenths. And then this one we needed to times by 5 to give us 5 fifteenths. And then we could say, okay, 9 fifteenths subtract 5 fifteenths is 4 fifteenths. And then if necessary, we reduced our fraction. Well, the same thing can be said for adding and subtracting rational expressions. So a simple one would be, say we had 5 over x plus 8 over x. Well, this is lovely because they have common denominators already. So 5 plus 8 would be 13 over x. And of course we have two fractions here. So there's a potential for some non-permissible values. Here we have x can't be 0. Here we have x can't be 0. So we would say the answer is 13 over x, where x cannot equal 0. So adding and subtracting rational expressions, again, follows the same concepts of adding and subtracting fractions, and that is we must have common denominators before we can add or subtract the fractions. So here we have some rational expressions that, in this case, we need to subtract. Unfortunately, the denominators are not the same here, so we need to we need to get them the same. So this has, let's first of all, let's look at the, the coefficients, the numbers. One's a five and one's a three. So just like a regular fraction, we need to get those coefficients the same too. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this one by 5, so that becomes a 15, and the top and bottom of this one by 3. So this would become 9x over 15x squared y minus 20y squared, 5 times 4, over 15x cubed y cubed. So this is great. We got the numbers the same, but we still don't have the same variables down here. This has an x squared in it, but this one has an x cubed. So this has one extra x in it. So I'm going to need to multiply this one by x so that it eventually will have an x cubed as well. Now this denominator here has a y cubed in it, and this only has one y in it, like y to the power of 1. So I'm going to need an extra two y's, or y squared, and I think once we do this, let's just double check, I think we're going to have the uh, denominators the same. So we have 9, x times x becomes x squared, and then we've got a y squared. And this denominator is a 15, x squared times x is now put that at x cubed, and y to the power of 1 times y squared is put that at y cubed. This fraction I didn't have to multiply by anything. And... Let's just double check. Have we got the denominators the same? Yes. So these are exactly the same. So now we can say, okay, that's 9x squared y squared minus 20y squared all over 15x cubed y cubed. So we've, we've put the, uh, we've written the two expressions now as one single expression. Now once we've done that, it's possible sometimes to simplify it further. So I see here that there's actually a common factor of y squared. I'm looking at the 9 and the 20, no common factor there. This has x's in it, but this doesn't. But there's a common factor of y squared here. So I'm going to pull that out. And that's going to leave me with 9x squared. I've taken the y squared out, minus 20 and I've taken the y squared out, all over 15x cubed 
y cubed. And now, because this is y squared times all of this, I can cancel two of those with two of these. So now that's just y to the 1. So we have 9x squared minus 20 over 15x cubed y to the 1, which I don't need to write. And this would be our simplified expression. Again, nothing cancels anymore up here because we don't have a 9x squared minus 20 in the denominator. So don't forget, we can't cancel parts of sums. You can't cancel these x's with this x down here because there's a minus sign in this case after it. So we're finished. Let's look at this one. 2b over 3b squared minus 27 plus b divided by b squared minus b minus 6. So we're going to add these two and again problem with the denominator not the same. So we'll factor it. Common factor of 3 here. And on the second one we have b squared minus b minus 6. So two numbers that multiply to minus 6 and add to minus 1 is going to be b minus 3 and b plus 2. And this first one I can still factor because it's a difference of squares now. So this is why we this is why we factored it because once we factored it we can see that there's actually a common factor of b minus 3. They're they're the same here. The problem is is that this one has a 3 and this one doesn't. So I'm going to need a 3 down here and what I do to the denominator I have to do to the numerator here. So if I put a 3 down here now they both have a 3 and they both have a b minus 3. But this one has a b plus 3 and this one doesn't. So we're going to need a b plus 3 here and got to put a b plus 3 up top. And let's see, so 3 and b minus 3 and b plus 3, 3, b minus 3, b, oh there's a b plus 2 here in this denominator that this one doesn't have. So we're going to put a b plus 2 here and a b plus 2 up here. So I think we should have it here now. So this will become 2b times b plus 2 all over 3, b minus 3, b plus 3, b plus 2, plus, I'm going to write the 3 first. We got a 3, we got a b. Usually we write the number first, then if there's a, a variable on its own, that next, and then finally the binomial which is the b plus 3. And we've got a 3 here, we've got the b minus 3, we've got the b plus 3, we've got the b plus 2. And I think these are now exactly the same denominators. So now that we've taken all the work to get the denominator the same, we can say this is 2b times b plus 2 plus 3b times b plus 3 all over 3b b minus 3b plus 3b plus 2 and now what we'll do is we'll multiply this in here because I think we'll be able to collect some like terms so that's 2b squared plus 4b 2b times 2 plus 3b times b is 3b squared and 3 times 3 is 9b all over our common denominator now. So 2b squared plus 3b squared is going to give us 5b squared and 4b plus 9b is 13b And then always a good idea, once you've got everything, all your like terms collected, good idea to just factor your numerator. So there's a common factor of b here. 
So taking that out, and what you want to do is you want to check, do once you factor that out, do any of these factors in the numerator now cancel with anything in the denominator? So we've got a b up here, but we have no b factor in the denominator. We've got a 5b plus 13. There's no 5b plus 13 down here. So this question would be finished because nothing in the numerator would cancel with anything in the denominator. Now in terms of the non-permissible values, it's always a good idea to go back to the step where you had the single fraction with the one uh, set of denominators down here. And now we can quickly see for our non-permissibles, we've got b cannot equal 3, b cannot equal negative 3, and b cannot equal negative 2. These would be the values that would make the fraction, uh, the denominator equal to 0, which is non-permissible. So we'd have this as our, our final answer with b not equal to negative 2 and plus or minus 3. So to add or subtract rational expressions, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get common denominators. So we might need to factor this thing first. So can't factor this. It looks like a difference of squares, but it's you can't take the square to 20. But x squared minus 4 will factor to x minus 2, x plus 2. So I can see I should have an x minus 2 and an x plus 2 in each denominator. This one doesn't have an x minus 2 in it, so I'm going to put one down there, and that'll put one up top there. So this would now have a common denominator. The denominators are x minus 2 over x plus 2. So now I can add or subtract my numerators. So I'm going to add my numerators here. Oops. So I have x squared minus 20 plus x minus 2 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2 times x plus 2. So I've got a single expression here, but it says the next step is we want to make sure we collect our like terms and then factor if possible. So I've got some multiplying that I can do here. I can FOIL this one out and let's see what we would end up getting. So that's x squared minus 20 plus x squared minus 2x minus another 2x plus 4 all over x minus 2 times x plus 2. So this would give me x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared, minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x, and then minus 20 and plus 4 is negative 16 all over x minus 2, x plus 2. So I've collected my like terms, I've multiplied it all out, got all my like terms together, and then it says if possible factor. So it is possible for me to factor this, there's a common factor of 2. And then I can still factor this because this is a trinomial, so two numbers that multiply to minus 8 and add to minus 2 are negative 4 and positive 2. So there, I've let's just review again here what we've done. We got common denominators. They were x minus 2, x plus 2. That gave us now a single expression. We went from two fractions added together to just one fraction here with the common denominator. We multiplied this out and collected our like terms. We factored it. And now, if possible, reduce our fraction. Yes, it is possible. There's a common factor here of x plus 2. So this would be 2x minus 4 over x minus 2. And if we wanted to list our non-permissible values, we wouldn't look at our final answer here. We would need to go back to where we had the, the single fraction, which was right here. And so we can't divide by 0, which means x can't equal 2 or minus 2. So x couldn't equal plus or minus 2. 
So that's adding and subtracting rational expressions.